And Nazo Sensei, good evening. Bell, Teja Bell sent Roshi, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Uh, happy to have Teja on tonight. Um, we've asked him before to tell us a little bit of uh, his background. Uh, and I'd like for him to go over that again uh, uh, in case you weren't paying attention. Uh, so many of you know him from the old days. Uh, uh, remember him as a nice guy who played a guitar. And, uh, but he's developed his skills since the time. So TJ, tell us about your <laughs> onward history to get here. Uh, well, first of all, since it's great to be with you and wonderful to have this time with your, uh, uh, with your dojo here virtually. So I'm very pleased. I uh, uh, quite enjoyed over the uh, months and weeks tuning in and contributing from time to time. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I still play guitar, as a matter of fact, and uh, really do enjoy that. Uh, I'll, let me start with this part. Uh, back in 1979, I came to San Francisco and then uh, began studying with Nado Sensei, and and uh, that was at the old uh, Church Street Dojo. So I'd been studying uh, Aikido and other martial arts since 1971. I think uh, Moon Richard Moon is one of those guys that started that same year. So believe it or not, it's 50 years in Aikido since the beginning. You'll want to rank. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, it's, been, it's been an incredible journey and it's been made all that more uh, deep and poignant because of your approach to, to Aikido Sensei. And um, over the time, I've always been interested in Zen. I started reading Zen, I think, in uh, 1969 or something like that, and finally became associated with a particular school, a Renzai Zen school, and began uh, studying and doing multiple retreats and working with a, a teacher. And about six years ago, I was given the... Uh, the, what's called Inca, which is a kind of a recognition, a, a Roshi uh, level recognition. A teaching certificate? A teaching certificate, yes, as a matter of fact. So um, uh, it's been, it continues to be an amazing journey to uh, in the weaving of our, of our practices in these times, you know, so it's not just about the ancient uh, Renzai tradition of which I'm uh, a teacher in that in that lineage and you know considered like the 84th patriarch in that particular lineage but what's in, what's interesting is how things evolve and change and what it means to be a teacher in in Zen now is much different than it was in classical Japan or even a hundred years ago I would say so I'm in, in that feeling of evolution, of, uh, of deep learning and practice. And it's, a, you know, it's always a, a privilege to be able to, to teach and continue to study. And I'm also studying in, the, in other traditions of Taoism and Buddhism, teach Qigong and like that. So tell us about, uh, you have a big following in China. Yeah. Tell us about your following. <laughs> Well, it, it's just, uh, I think, uh, kind of dumb luck in some ways. The, the, uh, I've trained with and practiced with at Spirit Rock with uh, people like Jack Hornfield and Trudy Goodman and uh, many others, Robert Hall, may, maybe some people remember him. So I was invited to come to, to China and uh, a number of years ago, maybe six or seven years ago. And I've been to China many times, actually to play guitar, actually, ah. before that in the, in the late 90s and early twos. But uh, Jack invited me, he said, come and teach Qigong. And I said, teach Qigong in China? You mean? <laughs> 
So they vet you pretty hard over there uh, to, to see if you are worthy. And I don't know if I'm worthy, but um, they liked my teaching nevertheless. So I have a big following in China. I continue to do programs for uh, my Chinese cohort. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, amazingly, I have an international cohort of people in Europe, as well as all over the United States. Yeah. Ah, good. Yeah. The boy did good. Anyway. <laughs> So tonight uh, we didn't plan on anything. Uh, and I was thinking maybe, uh, well, using the uh, three layer cake, remember three layer cake, uh, just to start generally and, and, and go through and see, see where we're at, uh, see what words he uses. Uh, uh, so we'll start. So on the three layer cake, uh, the first layer for me is the physical, meaning heavier energy, okay? Uh, and so, I don't know, basic, settle down with your body, settle down into the body. Uh, after a bit, you stop thinking and start feeling. So easy with thinking, and you begin to feel more and more. So that's, for me, the basic starting point, okay? So if I were on the floor, I'd be feeling my sitting pillow, uh, starting to square away, aligning a bit, getting comfortable so I could sit there for whatever, an hour or two, whatever, whatever. Um, so, that first settling physical. Ta da! Mm -hmm. My approach with that, very similar in the, uh, in the understanding, say we're starting with what we have. We, we're starting with this human being. Uh, part of my approach, it, which is a classical approach, is to work with the breath to help to entrain a quality of calmness. So the proliferation of thoughts begin to slow down. The emotional tone becomes more settled. You know, we do this in Aikido, really settling into the hara. In Chinese, they call it the lower dantian. And we sometimes in English will reference that. This is our center. But there's a, there's a way of settling down. Um, a presencing in, a centering and settling. That's, that would be my kind of first level. Working with the breath, I work as, yeah. especially with that. Yeah. And we've been asking people uh, to play with chanting. We've been doing a yayi, mamami, mumemo thing. And I'm getting some feedback. A lot of people like it because it seems to take them out of their thinking mind as opposed to their feeling level mind or later finer feeling, seems to take them out of that clearer and faster. I think teacher said the breathing uh, for him will do a similar thing, okay? So whatever tricks, chanting, breathing, what the hell, <laughs> to handle that first settling down, those first couple of dimensions in the heavier realm, the physical feeling realm, okay? Oh, by the way, he's talking about uh, uh, core hara. Uh, possibly next time we get together, I might uh, I might want to try uh, uh, using that lineage, dimensionally speaking, that there's a lineage of core uh, through here, and uh, I think it'd be worth going over. Give you another reference point. Uh, so we'll, another time, I'll give you. A heads up someplace. Uh, so where are we? So physical settling. Okay. Uh, we're at a feeling and then might be another level or two where it's a finer level of feeling. Uh, and soon as we shift from feeling to finer level of feeling, you might start to pick up the energy, sense of energy. And 
definitely by the time you get to sensing, you ought to be there. But let's say first is finer level of feeling. Uh, just saying that my, my hands are getting hot right right now. Okay, they're starting to tingle and come come alive. Uh, that finer level of energy. If I feel that finer level of energy, uh, what else? Here, my chest is trying to expand. It wants to breathe fuller, a little more bellowing breathing, for example. He's at this first level of settling physical feeling energy. Is there anything to add to that? Um, for me, my experience in coming into that deeper space includes space so there's energy but there's also a spaciousness in that so I'm not cognating i'm not uh, not thinking about or trying to make sense of what's taking place i have a sense of trust in both the space the breath the the center the energy okay so yeah more more room mm -hmm. uh, and i I think we try to remind you as often as we can when you're starting to settle and open, open to more room because we're getting closer to more finer energies that will show. And if you're not open enough, they push it too fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the, the sense of a space, a sense of more room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a good point he made there where uh, let's say you're settling and there's a sense of more room, how you'll notice that. And you could blip into thinking about that. Why is that happening? What is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're out of the place of more room. You're starting to think about it, which is taking you out of it. Yeah. So you learn a trick after a while of, of having a new experience and learning not to be bounced out with that new experience, how to hang in there with the new experience. If I find myself bouncing, I immediately go back into the experience of the more space, okay? So for a lot of people, it'd be easy for them to start thinking about it and go on forever about more space, and they're not there anymore. And they're definitely they're not gonna continue the lineage. Yeah. Where are we here? Yeah, that's, that's actually, that's a great place to uh, to be able to feel in, I think the word, one of the words that I like to use is learning how to trust. So we're learning to trust spaciousness without all the generation of thought and uh, trying to create meaning around it. So when you trust the space itself, it has its own way of speaking of echoing back presence, intelligence, even love. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I said something I wanted to add on to what was it? the trust. Trust. You're on to me. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. You're you're sitting. You're settling, and things are showing. And we're saying when when a new thing shows, like space in this case. Uh, oh, let me think about that. Okay. Uh, Try not to do that, okay? We stay with the experience. And the trust is, if it showed up, it's there, okay? Well, I don't trust it's there. I, I, I have to uh, think about it to make sure it's okay. Did I make that up? Because since I said there's space, you're screwing it all up. What are you doing, okay? If it shows, you trust it for a bit. If it's a lie, it'll never show again, okay? unless you call it back and you're lying to yourself, but it won't show again if it's not important. Don't worry about it. Say, oh, that's interesting, more space, okay. And you flavor it, whatever the right words are, flavor it, experience it. <sighs> Who are you in the more space, I might say. I'm the guy that breathes better is what I'm feeling. Uh, oh, I feel a little more settled, a little bit deeper. Oh, okay. Who am I in this more open space? A deeper, fuller breathing fellow. I don't even like the word guy there. Fellow felt better. Mm -hmm. okay. It begins to name itself as an aside. Whew. Where are we? 
That's good. <laughs> That's good. I think that that is establishing, you know, in the practices that I lead, which are both the somatic practices of the Qigong, but also in the meditation, you can't just, okay, I'm sitting down and I'm meditating because you're carrying all that baggage with you. And so this, this time that we're taking even right now to establish, we're talking about it, but we're also doing that practice of feeling the spaciousness and, and letting go into, the, uh, into that uh, sense of trust. Trust, can we cover trust fully enough? Trust, trust, if it shows, trust it. If it's not important, it won't be there tomorrow. Next time you go through your pattern tomorrow, it won't be there. But if it's something important, it'll be, it'll be there again. Uh -huh. It may skip a day, but it'll be there the next day. Uh -huh. So so you go, oh, okay, that's a something. How do I know? Because it showed up every other day for a month. It's definitely a something, okay? Let's hang with trust for just okay. another moment. Trust. Because what is being trusted? So we can say... Even, even in using a term like, I trust the universe, it still has a sense of external. So the, the, we're using the term trust to trust the essential space that is opening up, even without content, without cognitive content, without, uh, you know, or the feeling content might be moving and pulsing and flexing, but we're trusting that as, in, as who we are in a way. Can I say uh, trust the experience? I'd say trust the experience, but also there's a way that it's not the, in the higher way that you're using the word self, trusting in self. That might be, we might be skipping up a little hint. But yeah, don't use the word self, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know we, we use got, it. Where's my cue we card also here? Right? File away <laughs> that I use it at a particular place <laughs> and a particular level. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, but I know the human condition myself. This is myself. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It can be a condition. Yes, I, I did. Dig so, digging on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. So settling, settling. Uh, by the time you get to sensing, uh, finer feeling, Sensing word mm -hmm. is the word that I use there, mm -hmm. sensing. And that's where you begin to, what to say, feel things you can't feel. Yeah. Uh, for example, I can feel the end of my arm. But when I get into a finer dimension, uh, my arm feels like it's touching a further wall out there. I can't say I feel that, but at this level I'm at, I don't know what to call it, sense feel? But my arm is definitely longer. Mm -hmm. But I can't physically prove that. If I look at it, it still stops here. Sense feeling. Uh, imaginary experience. I don't know. Something. Resonant, the resonant space. Sheldrake's morphic field of resonance. And... Uh, uh, but I think the, the beauty of this, of moving in here, is something that we can naturally do. And the, the way that you've taught us Aikido over the years is not about the fumbling around of the technique, although there is some precision, of course, of that, but really feeling the field, fe feeling intention. So that's why the extent, when you're talking about the extension, just because it's not empirically provable because the end of my physical form ends there doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't actually extend and we feel that extension. And it could show in physical Aikido where uh, when your partner grabs, you say you're doing that kind of move, uh, you can feel somehow that it is further out there, further encompassing him. Mm. Uh, that's a sense feeling. But you get a little feedback from your partner. Could I say that? Okay. Sure. Now, the problem in saying that is people will come out and get partner oriented and stop doing this inner work that yeah. Teej and I are talking about. That's where they keep, excuse me, screwing up. <laughs> okay. I, for example, I say to somebody, settle and you'll perform better. 
hopefully they'll settle a bit. And I say, okay, now let's do that same technique again. But because you're settled, does it feel better, easier, smoother, whatever? Uh, and But their potential is to keep going out to see if it's better and, and to try to make it a bit better. They sort of forget the direction of the work that we're doing. We're doing inner to see if it manifests outer, but outer is our secondary check. Inner is the primary. And people tend to go the other way around. They make the out there the primary and the inner secondary. They talk about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I did a we center and I did a we do energy work. And I was, let me see it. I can't see it. Because they're out there doing shit. Okay. So that's my bitch. Uh -huh. Say something <laughs> nice because I'm not. Okay. <laughs> The, the sense that I get in that is the orientation in some of our practice. In one way of speaking about this, which you're probably familiar with, is, this, is the sense of this um, uh, horizontal relationship. And it has to do with dealing with the body, dealing with movement, dealing with finance, dealing with the da-da-da. Whatever that is, it has to do with this kind of uh, orientation. Uh, another way of speaking of it, it's not perfect analogy, but it is the vertical, which you're referencing here as the internal. So with the, the internal is paying attention not to the ability to manipulate outside space, but to be coherent and present in your own being, in your own body. And that deeper listening that we're talking to uh, and that trust that develops, it doesn't happen immediately, it develops over time, then we learn how to trust the intelligence that it, that expresses yeah. in the various domains of, not just IQ practice. There's no question in my mind that if I settle, I'll perform better. If I settle, I'll be a little easier to get along with. <laughs> There's no question in my mind. I mean, how much feedback do you need, <laughs> you know? And you keep worrying about that or what? Come on, that's, you've done it. <laughs> you people are 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Some of you are less time, but you're sharp. <laughs> that's nice, that's very kind. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice these days. <laughs> I need more practice. But... Mm -hmm. Okay, so finer sensing. And I'd have to fine tune what he's talking about, about uh, just the center, because I also know that there are circular yeah. beats and there's a centered character just based on circular beats. And a fuller of that centered character, you can pick it up better through the up and down beat. So yeah. in the uh, uh, manifest, the heavier realm, uh, there are, could I say two? Two things going on, the up and down and the in and out. <laughs> yeah. At least. Yeah. And both of those could help the, the core uh, or a better level of person, character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are, are we? Yeah, I think we're, we're in accord on that. I was just using the horizontal and vertical as an orientation to, uh, to being. And you're talking about really centering in to that what we might feel sometimes is the vertical line and the uh, the center as the center circle. So it's a little bit different to say the, to talk about that than just to say the the horizontal and vertical. It's really more your definition of centering and then center circle is much more dimensional. Uh, before I forget, uh, as we're gabbing away here, anyone, if you have a question, uh, you can wave your hand and we'll give you an open mic. So feel feel free, especially if Tisha says something you don't understand. Feel free. <laughs> right up. Any takers on that up to this point? We did our first basic. Feeling, settling, feeling, whatever it's convenient for you. 
breathing, chanting, whatever's convenient for you. And then you naturally move into a finer dimension, keep settling, opening with that sense of finer dimensional energies may push a bit more. So you want to be open. They don't want to really push you. If you're too tight, they will. Mm -hmm. If you open, they're trying to mix up, could I say a better character? Yeah. Uh, they're not trying to push you. Although that's what will happen. Okay. But for example, if you're too heady and you say, help, I need some help, you're going to be pushed because the energies that are trying to mix up help uh, are shooting through. So that's why we like that opening as we settle more and more in mm. that sense. Simple trick. No questions, no takers. Okay, where are we? Find your dimensions. Second layer. Uh, yeah, second. and again, uh, oh, since they would call the two layers manifest, and I told you before why I broke them, broke them up because people were aware of the heavier, but they weren't clear. Remember, I'm from the fifties. Uh, weren't clear on what energy was. So my first take, oh, the energies are hidden. Uh, but as you get fuller with this, uh, the heavier energies, physical, and the finer energies are all one thing, what I'll sense they call the manifest mm -hmm. universe. Okay. And then eventually we'll get to the domain of self. Uh, but let's stay in the manifest. So where are we? Finer and finer. Uh, I think it's very important in that uh, dimensional progression, settle down. Well, what about there? What about there? We settle down and the next beat is moving into a, well, okay, there's three stages. One, uh, I'm ex I've been running and I'm exhausted. I settle down. I get my, you call it second win. Mm -hmm. I get a little more energies. Ah, but these energies are, are the same I had before I got tired. So I'm holding a status quo, I think I could call it. And that's fine. Okay. If I'm a 10 pounder and I'm starting to uh, get tired, I can't hold 10 pounds anymore. <sighs> Boom, and I tap the next uh, batch of energy, mm. and it might be a, a replenishing of the 10 pounder. Okay. Now, another level there is on that downtime. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that, difficult words for that in a minute. Uh, is you move into a finer dimension, you take advantage of that down. And you move into a finer dimension. So you're more than enhanced. You're past your norm. Or I, I, I'm pooping out as a 10-pounder. I can't go anymore. Ah, I go into a deeper dimension here. Boom. It mixes up a 15-pounder. I'm not Bobby anymore. I'm Robert. That, that's what that those words mean that's what that, that means okay so uh it, it's your choice how to play with it um uh, i say that all, all right i think so yeah i probably missed something but clarify that's that that's the, the nature of language anyway uh, you're I, never going to pen it exactly um i think right from the beginning when you started doing this whole series of uh presentations of, of classes really I, I remember the, like the first one of the first things you did was do the downtime and say and say how important that was rather than freaking out about all the unknowns like when you think of that you know a year and a half ago or whenever that was a year and four months that okay this is an opportunity so that was that was very key and i think that led into the the, the teachings that you've been offering over time yeah so there's one other thing uh, that i'd say about that um 
as we're working with the with the energies, the uh, the the sense of clarity is also uh, intimately connected with with space, with the spaciousness. So wisdom in this way, the kind of the the embodied presence that you're talking about, and as, as we drop in. It's not about having more smarts or being wiser about things particularly, but being able to, to settle into the clarity of the trust, I'm using that word again, experience, experiential okay. aspect of being present and trusting what is here, what is arising. Uh, see, we got to remember that in the not just the human condition, but since the beginnings of creation, there was a little misunderstanding at the beginnings when we moved into the creation uh, of a lot of awareness and we didn't catch what we're supposed to experience. So even now, there's a percentage-wise an over-tendency to be aware of and, and not have enough of the actual experience, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, at first, maybe a little tricky because an awareness of has some experience. You can't have a circle without some amount of center being there. But the fullness of the center, the major of feeling experiential, has been missed a lot. Percentage is very high on how much of that has been missed. Did I say that? Okay. I think I, I think he did. The uh... We're not dissing the cognitive or awareness aspect, yeah. but we're saying that there is other, uh, what's the right word, uh, dimensions or potentials. I go bigger, another whole piece of creation. Thanks. I, I, <laughs> I, I, can, I can go with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, sometimes when I'm talking to my meditation students, They'll reference the texts and the literature and Buddhist or Taoist or even Christian stuff. And I say, this is one domain of knowledge. There's a whole other domain that we're talking about it, where, where knowledge might not even be the right word to reference. It's that deep experience, experiential space that is that is uh, full of clarity, is full of space, is full of that trust, and it's full of kind of radiant intelligent, uh, intelligence in some way. I think I got this phrase from O Sensei. Uh, the fuller of a self, uh, exper experiencing, I am aware. Mm. Aware, I experience. You see, there are, there are a team, okay? Uh, in the heavier dimensions, they're a little more separate, so we have to settle down so they can start to dance together, mind, yeah. body, harmony, or whatever. Sure. Uh, but that's based on an even earlier positioning, an earlier level, uh, where experience I am aware, aware I experience, or say it the other way around, aware I experience. Nice word. Now, actually experiencing, I am aware. So we're not trying to make one the major over the other. We're just saying we got to get a little more harmony here, a little more fullness. There's a a phrase that you you hit me with once on uh, the double check. Uh, do you remember double check? Uh, aware of the awareness. Oh yeah, so aware, aware, aware of awareness. Yeah. yeah. Could you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, um, maybe this would be a really good time to do a, sh uh, a very short exercise that directly points out awareness of awareness. Would that be all right with you? All right. You got one. Well, if you want more room. No, no, this is good. Okay. This is good. Um, in the meditation practice traditions, uh, there is something that's uh, referenced as the pointing out instruction. So it's not about appropriating some kind of knowledge, but a direct awareness of uh, connecting with the essence that we're, uh, that we're pointing to here. 
So if you would like to do a, a very short exercise, this will take three, four minutes at the most. It is a kind of a pointing out exercise that references what Sensei was just uh, talking about and pointing to in the way that he does. So here's how we do it. Um, you can have your eyes open or your eyes closed, but this is not a bad practice to do for a moment or two if, you're, if you feel like you're in a safe place to close your eyes. So you, you know, you're upright, you sit, you're in a natural uh, position and just let your awareness drop into breath. So I'm gonna use that as our portal for this pointing out instruction. So just relax, feel the waves of your breath. You don't have to make it do anything. Just feeling the natural rhythm and waves of your breath. And then let that settle down in such a way that you start to feel this uh, organic rhythm of the breath without any contrivance. You're not, you don't have to do it. Your heartbeat doesn't, you don't have to do your heartbeat luckily. <laughs> So we start to settle that down, feel that for a moment or so. And in that, in that space, we're cultivating a kind of presence that begins to uh, radiate into the whole space of your human life. So it includes the bones and the cells and everything. We have these amazing doorways of, that we call our senses. So even though your eyes are closed, there may be kind of that internal sparkle. Um, you were referencing that earlier, Sensei, and you know, different ways of saying that. We are, we're listening to vibration of sound. There are certain feelings in the body. So we have all the senses that are, that are present. And now just bring the... I, I like to say, just bring the ease and kindness of your attention then uh, to the space of what might be arising in thought. So we're not dismissing thought. We're just not um, going down any of the avenues of thought. So we're, yeah, that's a thought, that's arising, that's a judgment, that's, a, that's a, an aspect, that's a memory even. We just let the river of experience from the thought and feeling take place. We're just gonna hold, just gently hold that for a moment or so. And we've included the sensations, the field of the breath here quite easily. And the, that can even also be emotion. So what might be arising for you in the, those emotional tones. But now I wanna invite you just for a moment to look at the awareness that is holding all of that. So before we go into that deep uh, reflective place, which we'll explore for just a moment, just note that your awareness, the thing that you sometimes call I, is holding all of these experiences, holding the, the sensations, the thought, the feeling, the history of your human life, all of this here. So now the pointing out is to look at that, uh, what sensei sometimes call that clear transparency of, of presence. So the uh, awareness of awareness is not something that you can hold on to. It's not something you can appropriate. But take the moment right now to presence in, to, I would say, use the term see, but it's not really a seeing. It's a being of this awareness of awareness, the ground out of which all these phenomena, all the sensations and the uh, experiences uh, are taking place. It's the ground of being. So let's just stay there for about 15 seconds or so. Easy breath, looking at the clear transparency. Not even looking, being.
Okay, just that easy. And kind of settle into that field of that deep presence, which is always here, which is always present. And now we're back in a way we're engaged in both our conversation, our thoughts, our feelings, the sensation of this unique human body. Ah. <laughs> I do that as kind of a clearing for myself sometimes, just to, just the to, to settling in. Okay, let's see. Uh, one thing would be for everybody, wherever you've got with that, uh, that that is there all the time. But sometimes I'm out here being busy. But if I do my earlier that uh, settling down bit whatever it's still there okay and after a bit uh, not that speed is important but after a bit you can get to that place a little faster maybe because you stop uh futzing <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah technical term right futzing yes, yes. very technical very oriental <laughs> uh well, you've, you've always called that, which I really appreciate, clearing. And I've kind of taken that into my meditation people, you know, and say, yeah, we're clearing. Okay, we can, I think, trigger that in. Uh, so we're talking about, uh, Tisha reminded me that one of our first sessions were on downtime because the corona was forcing a downtime. Uh, so downtime. I myself like dark a lot uh, and clearing, doing basically the same thing. Can I say a different word for the same thing? Sure. Clearing. Some people might say letting go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So letting go, downtime, clearing, uh, to me all kind of mean the same thing. Uh, the experiential sense of it a little bit different but it's basically doing the same thing so you're free to use your own word there and have your own if down dark is nice for you then use that one if if uh at first some people don't know what dark is and they're a little afraid of it remember we went to that monster bullshit and all to realize oh it's an ally beautiful energy level uh but any, anyway whatever word and the sense of that that's comfy for you fine okay there must be more words than that well one of my now. favorites that you've used recently is trading in ah trading in yeah yeah trading in <laughs> so if i'm a 10 pounder and i yeah and, and i want more i trade in all of the 10 pound mm -hmm. whatever that means all those energies the character 10 pounder just a sense of trading it in. Boom, hit another level. Again, either level of uh, just a replenishing of the 10 pounder, or when you get smart, you use that to move into a finer dimension, click, and a finer dimension replenishes, but it replenishes at 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Or Bobby to Robert kind of thing, or a one by to a two by. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so where are we? So again, the, I don't know if the, are the words aren't magic, it's what you're doing, yeah. what you're experiencing with those words. Yeah. Yeah. Not a hand shake from anybody after all this fantastic stuff. <laughs> There's one there, Steve. Yes. <clears throat> I want to go back to you know, you talked about the, the 10 pound to the 15 pound and so forth. And that say at 10 pounds, it's, it's, you know, it's too much for you there for you to lift 15. So you have to trade it in. Okay. What, and we talked about this a little on the phone this week. And it, I, I just like to hear more because it's, it's almost counterintuitive that when you feel like you're hitting a wall, when it feels like mm, I can't go on, there's there's a, a, a kind of a tendency to want to back away as yeah. opposed to moving on, op uh, trading in 
and moving on. Okay, first, let me, let me jump in, because if you go too far out, I'm gonna forget what you said. The wall is a dimensional nothing wall. I don't care if it shows like eight feet of, of cement. It's a dimensional wall. <sighs> easy before you get there, easy, easy. And you can pass through. It's a dimensional wall, it's nothing, okay? You're a little too heavy and you hit that. Well, you're too heavy to pass through. You must, ha, ah, to enable you to pass through. Uh, you can't, you need a passport. And the passport is, are you balanced? We could use that word. Are you balanced? Easy. Ah, easy. Ah, right about here. I can pass through that. So it's like having a passport. But I have to settle down, balance out at the level prior to it to be able to easily pass through it. If you notice, I shied it a little bit. The people, when I uh, had them play a game with the boulder in front of them on their path, mm -hmm. yeah, and some were climbing over it, some were climbing around it. I said, oh yeah, but that's the human form. In the finer dimensions, you settle down a bit, and you pass through the boulder. The guardians at the gate are saying, you're, you're not balanced enough, man, or you're too uptight, or you're reaching too much, you're trying too hard, and you gotta, oh, settle down. And then they let you pass through. They're not guardians stopping you. They're guardians stopping the heavies. Hey, you're too heavy to come through here. Lighten up. Oh, you just got lighter, pass through. Mm. Okay, so that's how those guardians at the gate are. Uh, they're just, you've got to adjust yourself. You've got to settle a bit more, move into a little finer energy vibration and poof, you go right through that. There are no real walls. I know they can look like it. I know if you, uh, in a certain way you can feel the thickness of them, but they're not, they're not, they're not. Okay. And you have to play with that, have some experience with that, and you'll know, shit, there are no walls. Okay. Change your frequency a bit. Mm, if you're nice. a little uptight, can't pass through. Ah, there, your frequency just changed. Very musical, right? Pass through. If you can, double check your frequency change. Mm -hmm. It ought to be virtually effortless. Okay, uh, you're going to continue. Was that? No, that's that's essentially it. I mean, it's 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 just you know a reminder that that's the time to to settle down, trade it in, and and not not get not do the opposite, which is, <laughs> I'm not doing this right, this is too much, you know, it's too strong. It, it's a time to really settle on easy. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, I can't believe we're eating up time. Uh, uh, any Anybody else before we continue? Over here? No wave of hands? Okay, if there's nothing, uh, where are we? Okay, finer dimensions, heavier vibes, physical, continuing. Yes, finer uh -oh. fine. Uh-oh, we, we lost. We, we lost the cake. <laughs> Somebody walking in the door when your grandmother made the cake and slammed the door slammed and the door. there goes the cake. My mother used to bitch. Don't slam the door. <laughs> In her case, it was the bread. The bread would. Anyway, okay, so finer and finer. Now, I, I like this uh, thing that Osensei said. Some people in that dimensional better balance, okay, however you got there, did you trade it in? Did you clear? Did you just let go? Um, so how, however you got to a finer dimensional level, anytime, uh, so Sensei would say, some people 
catch it, we're referring now to the self in the domain, uh, uh, can catch it fairly early because they have a, well, what's the word? Not a preponderance, a, a, a calling from self more than other people. Okay. A preponderance. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right word. Uh, <laughs> Proclivity. Yeah, there, that's what I think. Pro Thanks, Aaron. That's yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> and he said some won't catch it there, but as they move into finer dimensions and finer dimensions mm -hmm. and the balance thereof, mm -hmm. at that point, they can uh, uh, do that big trade in for the domain of self. Okay. And no sense, I said some people will miss it totally. And what's happening there? Is this a finer in the manifest can get finer and finer and it goes endlessly finer. And they're so enthused with the finer vibe that the sense of a calling, proclivity, what word did you like? What was your word, Lauren? Proclivity. Proclivity. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that, I think I get their proclivity being called by the self to realize, oh my God, I'm self, uh, is not there as, as much. <laughs> oh, okay, so he said, they'll miss it completely. Kind of a shame, their, 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 their balance and their finer dimensions is more than good enough, mm -hmm. but they really like that finer hum and the finer, finer hum and the, uh, whatever, whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, an Osense uh, wording that I like. Yeah. Uh, where the hell are we? Uh, yes. Well, the, the uh, you and I have talked about as I work with meditators, um, especially if people come into meditation, they come in for various reasons, and they're all legit reasons. There's no wrong reason to come into or to be called into your own quote unquote spiritual journey or whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> the but. There is a tendency when you connect with that, that finer level in meditation where you finally achieve some sense of calm and there is a relief of the stress that actually brought you into the practice to say, yeah, well, this is where I'm going to stay. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to, uh, you know, don't push me. Uh, don't, uh, don't. I've got to where I wanted yes, to go. Yes, I got to where <laughs> I wanted to go. Uh, I'm I'm calm, and their nervous system is yeah. uh, relatively yeah. homeostatic. So if we imagine somebody who's really nervous and they're nervous all the time, uh, and they hate being nervous, learns to meditate or do something mm -hmm. where they touch a calm place at a certain level. There's a calm place. Yeah. Certain level, there's a harmonious vibe of place, depends what form you're using. A certain level, there's a, ooh, I care for everybody place, mm -hmm. okay? So there is a calm place. Now imagine, for years, you've been beset by nervousness, and suddenly, here's a calm place. Uh, you might think that's the end of the journey. No, but but we respect, mm -hmm. we respect where you're respect coming it. from and that this is all you wanted. I call that level of comfortableness. And once I know you're really, truly at a level of comfortableness, I'll try not to bug you. Bug you means there's more. Okay, so if you really make it clear to me, leave me alone, man. I'm happy here. Oh, <laughs> okay. Go train in the corner. I won't bother you. Okay, but I'm a pusher. Okay, come on, move on, move on, move on. And uh, I probably drop the comfortable along the way, people. I probably drop them along the way. <laughs> anyway, so where are we? That's good. I think that's good to, to point out in this way that, that uh, different people will come to various levels um, even, even a person who goes into, let's say, meditation for the purpose of gaining that calm, mm -hmm. if they genuinely hang out with that, I think the next 
aspect will naturally, almost organically begin to arise. Potentially. Potentially. Not, Potentially. not, not as a given. Yeah. 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 Potentially. Maybe after uh, being calm for six months or a year or something, they go, I think there should be something more or for something, something will <laughs> nag at them, I think is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, once you deal with the situation that caused the tension, you know, when in, in our Aikido, we learn to stand, we do our basic practices, even like two-step. But if you put so much muscle into that that you exhaust yourself, you, it's not sustainable. So we look at sustainability in our practice and that helps to open up, I think, dimensions that are potential. Every person seems to have their own kind of internal timing around it. Yeah, we don't have to mull on that. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with it one level, but, but I've sometimes seen people just say, well, I won't do anything until God tells me to or something. And it's like, uh, and the years go by. Uh, so I'm not sure how far we want to push. Yeah, that. yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's, it's, but remember, I'm a pusher. So maybe you're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> it's like from the Pirates of the Caribbean, more like a guideline. I wanted to say something here about, oh, I wonder, if people can't catch the simplicity of, of this, that whatever you're looking for, you just settle a bit and it's on your lineage. Uh, and if you've been thinking about it, wanting it, it's probably on your lineage, okay? Or it wouldn't have seeped through, okay? Like, like oil sometimes used to bubble up at ground level and people say, what is that dark crap? The horses won't drink it. Uh, it would bubble through, and where am I going? I got lost. Um, not to work so hard, a nervous person trying to not be nervous. What are you doing? You exist right now in a nervous dimension. Settle down to a finer dimension. It's still nervous, but not quite as bad, but you may not even notice that the, the, the change is too minute for you. Ah, settle down some more. And I guarantee you there will be a calm place if you are nervous, okay? I guarantee it. So why are we spending time trying to get a nervous guy to be calm? Don't, don't try to make Bobby a nice guy. He's a son of a bitch, okay? Why are you wasting your time trying for that, Okay. He's thinking about it, I can feel it. So, mm -hmm. <sighs> I've been there for a while. <sighs> ah, I got lost again. We're still one by two by three by Basically. in that sense. Yeah. Uh, another way of speaking of it. Don't paint your one by room. Don't get new decor for your one by room. It's still going to be like, are you going to look like Katja? What do we call those people who store stuff? Orders. Orders. They order in a room would be like this. Couldn't even walk through the room. It'd be like, oh, you couldn't believe it. Ah. Oh. So let's not waste so much time worrying about the worrier. Oh, I'm at a worried level. Okay. Breathe, chant, jump up and down, do something, go for a walk. Ah, oh, don't try to correct this guy. Just Something to start the process, my word, process going, ah, to get to the level that you would like to be a citizen of, to manifest from, okay? Uh, follow, this fit in, follow. So I tell you dumb stories, like hanging around one day and, I think I want to go out and kill something or somebody. Uh, oh God. Uh, I can't do that. I'm too young and handsome. I don't want to go to jail. But this thing is strong and pushy. So I sat with it. It must have been the beginning days of my city. And I sat with it. 
And I went through different stages. One stage was red hot flames. Ah, da, 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 da. And I went through these levels of stages. I got to a place where it was just power. It was just powerful. Mm -hmm. But I noticed it had no agenda. They weren't hurting anybody. It was just powerful. Oh, oh, that's a whole different trip. But out here, meow, kill. Ah, da, da. So I don't try to get that guy to stop thinking about killing. That's what he does. Easy. Settle. Breathe. Chant. Something. Something. Just to change level. And that kill character doesn't exist here. Mm -hmm. And then I would choose to spend more time there. I would choose not to stray too far away. And I would catch how things could pull me out. I began to observe those things. I could feel when it was pulling me out, as I had a feeling for that level, I, I could feel what pulled me out and, and all, all of that. Uh, is that, is that? Okay? That's great. You know on that? And Sensei Tom Lewis had a, his hand raised. Who? who? Tom. Tom Lewis. Oh, it's Tom again. Hey, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Tom. Hi, Sensei. Good evening. And uh, uh, Sensei and Tisha, um, it, it, it came to my mind when you were talking about this place of calm. And, and there's more. There's more than just being in a calm place. And I wanted to know what your thoughts are about transmission. Um, and in meditation and in states of of uh, consciousness, often another individual says, I have felt some transmission from you. I feel the sense of calm that you're, you have, and suddenly I feel calm. Um, you know, on the mat, sometimes I'm feeling the grounded, calm presence of the uh, nage and as uke it times my entry so there seems to be some kind of transmission happening um and i wanted to know what you you about that let me start it off yeah please uh okay one one piece yeah calm place let's say there's a core there there's a character Mr. Calm has a core. Core is energy radiating mm -hmm. and it's radiating very strongly calmness. So you come hang out with them and you get calmer. Okay? That's kind of a natural. Yeah, um, I, that's very well said. It, it's so interesting that we um, limit our perception about things to, to physical, two to three dimensional uh, awareness. And this is not about being metaphysical. As you, um, as you refine your natural, uh, however we're gonna call that, let's just for, for the sake of a word reference, call it embodied awareness. It's not, uh, unusual. It's uh, it's unusual that it doesn't happen more. Actually, that we can actually connect with the energy of the of the space of the intention of others around us, um, and the so transmission both in meditation and in the traditions that I work with, and both the Buddhist and Taoist traditions. The transmission is not like it's some top down thing from me coming down to you it is it's a reciprocity it's a relational um uh, the, i love nato's word of uh frequency you kind of attune in a in a frequency and that frequency opens up into uh, other potentials of uh of expression of creativity of uh of um, qualities of knowing, of qualities of being. So uh, transmission for me is like, I, I don't even doubt it at all. I've, I've experienced it too many times 
experienced it too many times with this guy, the, the feeling of, of that Aikido, of the spaciousness. And I've gone, he's done, uh, you know, different, different Aikido and fell through trap doors, you know, a couple, a couple layers down. <laughs> It's pretty cool, you know, <laughs> but you, but I have to be open to that and not trying to project, oh, I'm going to go through a trap door now. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm present wholehearted and feeling, and then he's in the zone and I, I get into the zone because that's what's happening there. I, I, I love that memory. And, and for me, uh, on the mat, sensei would say, you know, as Uke, you really need to be with Nage to feel. Um, and you learn more from feeling the intention and energy that is generated than you are just, you know, sticking your hand out or trying to create a, a showman or something uh, to actually uh, open up and be receptive to what you're feeling. Uh, yeah, and we're not asking a person to think. Yeah, don't ever tank for me. I hate that. But you come in <laughs> to do your thing, but in your positive, you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you learn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is Amy from Florida. They call it contagion theory. Um, contagion? Contagion. contagion theory. You walk into a room where people are uplifted are positive, you walk away uplifted. You walk into a room where people are negative, you walk away with a toxic feeling. There's lots of COVID. research on it. <laughs> it's called COVID, Amy. You walk into a room where people are COVID, watch out. <laughs> That's actually, I, I like that. Uh, I like your use of that word, Amy. That's cool. Uh, uh, maybe a little heads up, Tom. Uh, oh, since he did say, um, Be careful. Let's say you're calm and you and you're trying to see if people are being affected by your calmness. Be careful there. Once you start going out there, you're going to lose it. It's like I don't know what to say. You have to be calm because you enjoy you as calm. And as soon as you start going out, am I affecting them? You're going to screw it up. Yeah. Um, and keep that in mind because there's an advanced, advanced form where we get more into selves in the in the do domain. Uh, and this is from Ocente, if I can remember how we presented it. Anyway, just ba basically that. Uh, you can't worry about whether they're being affected or not. You, you really can't, okay? Uh, Christ couldn't worry about the guys who were saying, oh, hell, he's just a carpenter's kid. He couldn't worry about that. Wait a minute. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm Christ here. You know, he couldn't worry about that. He just was doing him. And no sense, I said essentially the same thing. But careful of coming out to check and stuff. You, you lose it. Even at Sensei. that fancy level. Sensei, this is Sean. I hear, I hear what you're saying as far as the calmness factor. And I think of that as wetness mm -hmm. and like you allow yourself to be, get wet. Um, and then, and then, but if you, if you get caught up in that, you get slippery and that's where you've called me out on that a number of times. And I, I appreciate that so much. The, the, like when you get wet, you also get slippery mm -hmm. and that's not where it's at because you're affecting the other person just wetness itself you can soak in that and become saturated and that it tr that transforms into a sense of like what you said spaciousness uh you know circularity whatever it you want to call it that's what it does mm -hmm. more yes or yep yeah and and practice in the way that we're talking about it is not a strategy we're not right. strategizing and figuring out what's the coolest way, the most effective right. <laughs> way to, to uh, be on the Aikido mat or be in the business conference or be in relationship in any way. We're talking about this inner development um, that happens in working with the maps that Sensei has laid out over 
as long as I've been working with him and really has had a wonderful consolidation in these and in this time in these weeks over the last you know almost year and a half so uh to to think about this as being really an unfolding process and not a way of figuring out what to do how to do it in that strategy kind of way is that uh, yeah yeah i think often it's misunderstood maybe say an Aikido example, uh, say, because I'm gonna lose myself, but because I know something, unfortunately a student thinks, well, to do it, I have to know it. And I really didn't say that. By having this experience and that happened, having this experience and that happened. Uh, now I kind of know that at this level, this is gonna happen but I didn't know it before I got there. <laughs> but I think people misunderstand because the way we talk or yeah, something. Yeah, it's, it's the nature of language, that, yeah. you know, in that sense, right? Yeah. But if we don't talk, it'll screw you up. If we do talk, it can screw you up. We're, we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. It's an ancient problem. It is. In, in Zen, we say, you have karma if you teach and you have karma if you don't teach. So. <laughs> There we got you coming and way. going here. Thank God it's a fantastic creation. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, so a certain level of balance at which time you can use that downtime, clearing time, trade in time uh, for a finer dimension mixes up a better character. Okay, centered and circled. Or if you have a sense for self, okay, to at that level of balance, however you're registering the balance, the hum of it, the quality that's there, uh, what, whatever, you're, use your own system. Uh, trade in for the domain of self. Okay. All right. My suggestions, and I don't know everything yet, I've got a little more work, or a lot more work to do in the domain of self, uh, but uh, to have a sense of the character character self being alive with itself mm -hmm. the next thing will naturally happen then it'll be aware okay uh so remember uh, uh, i jumped uh, all right eh, a little bit with uh, uh my brain cells are going new zealand mike uh, uh when he said oh my god what a big vast fancy place the domain is and i cringe a little bit because i'd rather you have a feeling of self and then self alive and then naturally taking in the domain how the domain works there's still energies there but uh, well forget that for now uh they're gonna have self present in the domain okay so, uh, and when I go into the core thing, uh, I'm kind of, I think I'll try to show how physical core to energy core to finer energy core, even in the domain, uh, uh, a self being alive with itself usually begins to show a core radiation mm, yeah. and more and more. And that seems to continue and get fancier. We'll let that go for now. Ah, where are we that's good that's oh that's, yeah that's very good sure. okay so that's about where we're at with this uh uh certain amount of balance and again don't procrastinate so i told you the story of one time i always sat for an hour my system was wired in for an hour sitting bing i knew when the hour was up okay one day i had an appointment i had to go to and i wanted to sit but i only had a half an hour damn, that nice place that I was used to get into, 
I got there in a half an hour. And I said, as I was getting up to go to my appointment, I said, something, something. So then I began to fun around with it. And I would cut the time down. I'd say, sit, but now only 20 minutes. Boom, there was that nice place. I got to it in 20 minutes instead of an hour, 15 minutes. I remember doing 15. I don't remember if I did 10 or five, but, but you, you got to think, what the hell was I doing that it took me an hour? I was futzing somehow. Okay. So I don't want you to race too much, reach for it kind of thing, but ah, physical presence, come on. Shouldn't take you all day long for some physical presence, come on. We're not asking for a perfect uh, Olympian performance here, people. Come on. Ah, hey, checking. Ah, a little bit too much thinking, a little bit more physical presence. Hey, hey, there. Good enough. Now, finer. Go. Boom, boom. So you'll be able to move along faster after a bit, which doesn't mean reach for it. But you can go through these things fast. Oh, Sensei was fast. He was so unbelievably fast. He'd be like, hey, <laughs> there he was. Okay. Oh, uh, also this story about the calm radiation, calm thing. So there's no sensei in the dojo. He had a real presence. Some of us knew when he was out of town, knew when he got back to town, we could feel the vibe change, okay? Oh, sensei dies. He takes all of that and he moves on. As soon as he took that away, uh, uh, Mary Heine especially was there at those days. And she said, it was amazing. Two days, three days, all these guys who you thought you knew were changing. Okay. Usually to the worst. They weren't able to ride his energy coattails. They were left to their own devices. And uh, there was a lot of falling apart there. Yeah. So by his very presence, he was radiating something. Mm -hmm. Then when he decided to go, he took that with him. And it, apparently it, it was kind of messy. Okay. So be careful of dependent fully on somebody else. You got to get your own. <laughs> Oh boy, TJ, where are we here? Just right here, and uh, so it's it's nice to uh, to kind of lay out those basics because the the foundations in any practice, whether it's meditation, whether it's guitar practice, whether it is Aikido, they they they're always relevant. It's always a good time to uh, to connect with them, and then, as you said, once those become a little more embodied, then the actual um, arc of the time that it takes to drop into the to the states where you're a good guitar player or you're a good aikidoist or you're you know a good meditator, even like as you were saying, um, the arc of that time uh, is. Uh, meets what is present in the opportunity uh, right then. So I'll do, when I do retreats, I do 30-day retreats. I've done 10-day retreats, five-day retreats. Uh, and what I notice is there's an arc in those retreats where you're, uh, where you're letting go, you're expanding, you can eventually kind of drop into the states that you were talking about. But it doesn't matter, <laughs> you know, it takes persons in doing the 30 day retreat about the, the same kind of arc to drop in as it does for somebody doing a five day retreat. They're still going through the same kind of arc. Now, whether it's exactly the same result, that remains to be seen. It's very personal. Yeah. Ah. So anyway, basics are important. Are we We've covered basics, I think, but if we haven't, is there anything about settling into a better level, being balanced, trading that in, find your own words and your own sense of that, letting go, downtime, deep, dark, don't panic, deep, dark, you'll touch another level, boom, the next beat comes out.
Uh, and Since today, it, it's it's uh, seven fifty. It may be yeah. just the right time to thank you and uh, okay. let, uh, uh, let uh, the the evening move on. If if someone has a question yes. or comment, uh, we mic. still have Anybody? time. Open mic. Open mic. Catch him while he's here. Well, I'll ask a question of Teja. Uh, uh, so you're a Zen teacher and a Tai Chi teacher and a Qigong teacher. Qigong. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> a lot of different what, ways what, of speaking about it, yes. Why, why the hell do you do Aikido? I love Aikido. Uh, you know, you, you almost don't have to have a reason. I don't have a reason why I love Aikido. Maybe I partly love it because I love Nado, but that's only one aspect of it. It's a, it's a form of beautiful, uh, integrated relational practice. And uh, that's, um, you know, uh, there are so many different ways of practicing. You could practice it technically, but practicing it as an internal art, which I think it was, uh, as far as I can tell, is what O Sensei really intended it to be, and and uh, Nato Sensei is one of the few teachers that really takes that so seriously that um, the that he cares about the development of your inner space of your of your orientation of your heart and your mind. So that's uh, that makes it unique and ma makes it a. a a life transforming pro, uh, practice for me. And, and for people not to get caught up in one thing um, like Aikido, uh, after a while, you sort of catch that anybody who's interested can do this process in their art. So we have Sadaharu O, the big time batter, big, big time. O Sensei taught him a little bit of a process and he got to a level where he was top of the line, top, top of the line, okay? Uh, baseball. So I want to say, uh, uh, or any other art, uh, you can have somebody uh, who is obviously a, a fantastic soul present in whatever, okay? So if you like Aido, you know, great. But don't sneer at or put anyone else down. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Sensei, we have a, a comment coming in now from uh, Richard Croft. And Richard. Hello. Hey, hey um, yeah, I'm not trying to comment. I just wanted to raise my hand in um, a question for Teja. Teja Bell here. I saw your name had a... On, on your website had a had a connection to I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly it was a like fudo myo some such like that that's a yeah, that's my dar that's my dharma name you know when you uh -huh. <laughs> it's a dharma it's a dharma name fudo myo as uh Lauren and others know is a kind of a a, a deity not that I'm a deity, you understand, but that they often give you uh, Dharma names in relationship to maybe an aspiration or a particular energetic connection. So I, I've been Fu since I was two years old. My great aunt from Ch uh, who was uh, in China, she, you know, I, I just have been Fu and that opened into Fudomio. So there it is. Okay, cool, yeah. I, well, uh, I wanted to ask about that. Um, I recall running into that deity in association with uh, one of the a mountain or a temple. I don't know. I think it was Kuma, uh, Kur Kuramayama, perhaps. But I wanted to just explore that subject and that deity. If you have comments on the character or your connection with that um, yeah. energy uh, and how you think about it, I think it's just a really cool zone that I just wanted to prompt. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. But I, I'll just say very, very briefly that uh, Fudomio is kind of, you know, there are peaceful deities and then there are wrathful deities. And those that know me <laughs> know that I rarely show the wrathful uh, aspect. 
but it is it's a it's a kind of cutting through hopefully delusion and uh that's the that's the energetic aspect of Fudomio that I relate to, that I aspire to. A nice way, nice ways his way through. Nicely cut off your head, <laughs> right? So. I'm a little heavier. <laughs> You're a dark Apollo. <laughs> oh, good. I have a name. Yeah. <laughs> People, are we finishing up here? That's uh... it. I think that may be a time oh, to oh, say oh, thank oh, you. Oh oh oh, 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 oh. Oh, we forgot to tell the people I'm taking a break next Friday. Well, uh, everyone, you heard it here first. <laughs> so uh, I'll send out our announcement. One of our background people is out. No big deal. We could have covered. But I've got to visit some family. All right. Well, They're thank old. you. Thank you, Nado Sensei, and thank you, Teja Bel Roshi, for a fascinating, instructive evening. And it's been an honor to listen to the two of you uh, go back and forth this way. A rare treat, a rare treat. And uh, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, staying with us. Uh, it is uh, three minutes before eight, and I think it's uh, time. Time to say good night, and I'm going to, uh, to ring one of Teja's favorite bells. Ciao, people. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. 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 Thank you.